Well, hello! Welcome to episode two of Book to Broadway. I made episode one forever ago and I'm sure nobody remembers, but this was the project I was working on where I go year by year and look at all of the original Broadway productions that were based on books. The last one that I did was for the year 2015 and this one is for 2001. So we're going back a bit. Let's get into it. I feel like before I go into the actual shows. I have to talk about 2001 just in general a little bit because this was obviously the year of the 9-11 terrorist attack. I am not saying this to compare lives lost through this attack and the lives lost through war after the attack. They're not comparable. But 9-11 still had a huge effect on Broadway and I do need to talk about that. It basically shut down the city. People didn't want to come to the city. A huge part of Broadway's revenue comes from tourists. Sales for Broadway shows were down 80%. I think five shows closed within the week. It was not good. The city actually supported Broadway a lot. Rudy Giuliani was the mayor at the time and he put out a statement that was basically like the best thing you can do for the city is just go see a Broadway show right now. He even made a joke. It's like, finally you can get tickets to go see the producers because the producers was like the hit show at the time. Imagine Hamilton of 2001, it was the producers. And he ordered Broadway to get back on its feet. All the shows were closed on the 11th and 12th, but they all reopened on the 13th and kept going. Even though nobody was really buying tickets, they were selling tickets for ridiculously low prices. Like I'm pretty sure I've read accounts of shows that were just selling five dollar tickets to their shows to students in colleges because they were just trying to fill the seats because they were performing to empty audiences that's just astounding to me the city gave a lot of broadway shows money to keep them afloat and without that probably more would have closed than they did um it's really weird to think that without that financial assistance. The Lion King and Phantom of the Opera in Chicago, they've been running forever. They probably would have closed, but they're still going now because of that. Once Broadway like recouped the money that it lost, they actually, as a unit, uh, all the shows donated a million dollars back to the city and that's really cool. Unfortunately though, off-Broadway and off-off-Broadway and all of the lesser theater scenes, they did not get any assistance from the city. They were basically all wiped out. A lot of people say that off-Broadway has still not recovered financially from the devastating losses that they faced after 9-11. Tick Tick Boom and Bat Boy were two really popular off-Broadway shows at the time. They both ended up closing and neither of them have ended up on Broadway. There's actually a famous story about Tick Tick Boom 9-11 where uh, the Tick Tick Boom off-Broadway cast recording was released on 9-11 and a man who worked in the Trade Center skipped work that day to go buy the CD when it came out. He missed the attack because he was buying a Tick Tick Boom CD and that just like blows my mind. <laughs> okay, now that I've gone over all of that, let's talk about the actual shows that premiered in 2001 that were based on books. There's only four of them. My last episode had so many more, so let's go over the four really quickly. The first one is The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. The book was written by Ken Ludwig, music and lyrics by Don Schlitz. Don Schlitz is a country musician, and there's definitely a lot of that influence in the music. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer is obviously based off of the book The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. The book was published in 1876. There, I think, were actually two different musical adaptations of this book in England in like the 50s and 60s, but it never appeared as a Broadway musical until 2001. But there have been dozens of film and television adaptations. It's a really famous classic book. I'm sure you've all heard of it. It takes place in the fictional version of Hannibal, Missouri, which is where Mark Twain grew up. In the book, it's called St. Petersburg. I know I just talked about 9-11 for like five hours, but this show happened before that. It opened April 26th at the Minskoff Theater and it was a massive flop and it closed a whopping 21 performances later on May 13th. This show just got not good reviews. Basically everyone said it was extremely boring. It was so bland. I read one review that said it was less colorful than dirty dishwater. <laughs> That was a good one. The only uh, Tony nominations it got were for lighting design and scenic design. The set was actually really cool. It was all like made out of bleached wood. There's a slide on set and 
actors would slide down it. There were a lot of set changes and it was just pretty cool. This show is actually kind of the, the launch of Kristen Bell's career. She dropped out of Tish in her final year to do this show. Was it a good decision? Maybe not. She only did it for like a month. And she played the sweet little love interest. There's a video of her singing this song. Um, I'll insert a little clip here. So nervous and so To me, the show just looks atrocious. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. The guy playing Tom Sawyer in that clip is Joshua Park, and he's kind of famous for unfortunately dying of pancreatic cancer when he was 38 years old. This is maybe his most famous role on Broadway. There actually is another musical based off of The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, which is another Mark Twain book. That musical is called Big River, and it was a big success, so. Mark Twain can, can go to Broadway, it can be good, but this one, this one was just not. We're gonna move on from that. Next, we're gonna talk about Thou Shalt Not. This has a book written by David Thompson and music and lyrics by Harry Connick Jr. This uh, production was actually delayed because of 9-11, but it finally opened on October 25th at the Plymouth Theater, which is now called the Schoenfeld. It closed 85 performances later on January 6th. This is based off of the book Therese Rakan by Emile Zola. Emile Zola is known for literary naturalism. He was a pretty politically controversial figure in France. He wrote a lot of controversial news stories. And this book, Therese Rakan. I talked about the book Therese Rakan in my last video because a play adaptation of it premiered on Broadway in 2015, but this is a more loose adaptation of the book. The book itself takes place in France. It is about an adulterous woman. The musical kind of takes the story, reframes it in World War II era New Orleans. The protagonist is a jazz pianist. The musical got kind of awful reviews, but a lot of the bad reviews I read were actually like, you should go see this show just to see how horrible it is. People thought it was like spectacularly bad. Multiple actors were injured throughout the process. I know one of the lead actresses like sprained her ankle and had to drop out of the show for a while. I'm pretty sure that in a fight call someone got like punched in the throat and they couldn't sing anymore. It was nominated for two Tonys for best score and best featured actor in a role uh, for Norbert Leo Butts. I love Norbert Leo Butts and he played the weirdest role in this. His character dies and comes back as a vengeful ghost and he does these like song and dance numbers where he's like singing this jaunty tune but he's actually like a ghost hell-bent on revenge. It's oh man this show is so weird. <laughs> but that's Thou Shalt Not. <laughs> The next show is a show that brings me great joy because it's the only Andrew Lloyd Webber musical that is considered a true flop. And as someone who hates Andrew Lloyd Webber, this just makes me happy. It's by Jeeves. Music, of course, by Andrew Lloyd Webber. Book and lyrics by Alan Ackborn. The show actually started out in 1975. It was called Jeeves. It was a massive, massive flop in London. It's almost five hours long. There were a lot of creative conflicts going on. I think it closed after 38 performances. Everyone just said it was atrocious. And then in 1996, they kind of reworked the original show. They retitled it by Jeeves instead of Jeeves because they wanted to make sure people knew it was different. Yeah, it opened at the Helen Hayes Theater, which is the smallest theater on Broadway, on October 28th, and it closed 73 performances later on December 30th. Didn't do so well. I read an account of someone who said that uh, they the cast used to serve tea on the sidewalk trying to get people to come to the show, which I think is hilarious. This musical is based off of the short stories by P.G. Woodhouse about the character 
Jeeves. The idea was actually originally conceived by Tim Rice, who thought of the idea to turn the Jeeves stories into a musical, and Tim Rice is a huge collaborator with Andrew Lloyd Webber, but he ended up backing out of the project, but Andrew Lloyd Webber continued with it, and then Alan Ackburn stepped in to write all of the words. P.G. Woodhouse, of course, is a famous English humorist. He actually had his own career writing on Broadway. This has nothing to do with the Andrew Lloyd Webber show, <laughs> but Jeeves is his most well-known work. He wrote like 35 short stories and 11 books mostly published in the early 1900s. I'm pretty sure these stories are the original source of like butlers being stereotypically called Jeeves. His character is Reginald Jeeves. It's the valet slash butler of Mr. Wooster. There have been a couple movies and a few plays based off of these stories. My favorite, of course, is the TV show Jeeves and Wooster, starring Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry, who are just an amazing comedy team, and I love that show. There's actually a production of this that was professionally filmed. You can watch it on YouTube. I think that this show is not horrible. It's just kind of silly and fun. Not really that impressive, but it's not that bad either. My favorite part of it is that Donna Lynn Chaplin is in it, and, and she's from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, and other shows and she's just a goddess. I love her. So it's really fun to see her. Don't trust Wooster. Hello! 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 Hello. 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 I wonder if you could possibly give me a... Uh, why... Bertram? <laughs> Bertram Wooster! Honoria, heavens! What a nice surprise! What are you doing here? Oh, just on my way to Totley. Totley. That's where I'm staying. Just been there, did you say? Uh, no, I'm just going now. Well, you're pointing the wrong way, you chump. <laughs> really? <laughs> that is by Jeeves. And then the last show that I'm going to talk about is a play. It's called QED. QED stands for the Latin phrase quoterat demonstratum. I think I butchered that. It basically means thus it has been demonstrated and it is used at the end of a lot of mathematical proofs or philosophical arguments and people will just end it with QED. Approved it. This is an interesting play. It was written by Peter Parnell and it opened on November 18th at the Vivian Beaumont Theatre and it closed June 20th in 2002, but within that time frame there were only 40 performances of it and that's because this wasn't like a fully launched Broadway production. It played at the same time as the show Contact and the nights where Contact was dark the show would just pop up and have like a single performance in a week. That's really interesting. It also like went on hiatus for two months so it just was a very scattered production schedule. It is really a passion project of Alan Alda. Alan Alda thought of the idea for the show and he really made it happen. He starred in it and he plays Richard Feynman. This show is based off of his books. He wrote the books Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, and What Do You Care What Other People Think, and these are like semi-autographical texts. But Richard Feynman is a fairly famous physicist, as far as physicist fame can go. He was part of the Manhattan Project, which produced nuclear weapons for World War II. He was part of a select group chosen by, I think, the president uh, to figure out what happened with the Challenger explosion. He was a professor, and he was really well known for having an exuberant personality, really interesting lectures. He just had a lot of eccentricities about him. And we have a eighth of an inch black hole into which these things go, which uh, is particularly sensitive to the parts of the waves that are coming in a particular direction. It's not particularly sensitive when they're coming in at the wrong angle, which you say is from the corner of our eye. And if we want to get more information in the corner of our eye, we swivel this ball about so that the hole will move from place to place. His life has been portrayed in a few different media sources. I think there's actually an opera based on his life. There's been like a BBC dramatization about his life. He's popped up in several other books. And Alan Alda really just took an interest in him and wanted to play him on stage and so he made this play happen. It's like I said mostly based on those two books that I mentioned. Both of them kind of break the fourth wall and the character of Richard Feynman like talks to the audience. The show is really just 
like a slice of life sort of thing. In addition to those books, he's also published tons of academic work, his lectures and textbooks and notes, all that jazz. Yeah, that's the play QED. That is all I really have to say. Those are the four original shows that premiered in 2001 that were based off of books. If you have a request for any specific year or just any specific production that you want me to talk about and then I'll do the year that that show originally premiered, let me know because I don't really know what I want to do next. I hope this is at least interesting to some people. I know not everyone is as into musicals as I am but I think this is fun and it's it's really cool for me to find the intersection between probably my two biggest passions which are like theater and books. So I'm having a good time. That's all for now. Goodbye!